I am the PI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. This week it is from Vibronics. We've never used, uh, we've never featured Vibronics on an FPI. It's so a cool logo. They do have a cool logo. Mm -hmm. It's a company they make vibrating motors, uh, e, uh, ERMs or LRAs. And you're like, what are those? We're going to tell you all about them. Um, so this is the featured product. Uh, this is a rectangular LRA, uh, but they have the, the whole INAPI is because they have a whole series of um, LRAs available at DigiKey. And I've never really known the difference between LRAs and ERMs with their four. Um, the specific part number we're covering is the VLV152564. Um, those numbers are like, you know, probably just the um, sizing of the uh, uh, bore. You see it's like 6.4 millimeters, that's 64. And then 25 is... 25 millimeters by 15 millimeters. So 15 by 25 by 6.4 millimeters. It's actually, um, batteries are also labeled the same way. So these are LRAs. They're um, linear resonant actuators. That's what it stands for. Um, and these are vibrating motors that are enclosed into like a little rectangular case that can be put into your product and design to add tactile feedback. Uh, looks like it also can be used as a bone conduction transducer if desired. But what it's really good for is um, adding little uh, clicks and tacks and ticks to your product uh, for haptic feedback. Um, this particular one is, uh, you know, just having some stats here. Um, the resonant frequency, you know, when you use your driver, uh, just make sure you can drive an eight ohm um, impedance. So that's, it's quite low. You'll need quite a bit of current. Um, and uh, the resonant frequency is about uh, 80 hertz. So set up your driving frequency to set the AC voltage at about 80 hertz, and that will get you the best reaction. Okay, so what is haptic feedback? Because uh, I was actually kind of researching what what is haptics and when was it used. So this is like a very early haptics um, patent that I found off of, uh, you know, linked off of Wikipedia. And basically uh, it was often used for when you have an uh, electronic interface to something that's mechanical and it used to be mechanical and you want to give feedback to the user to let them know when they've hit a limit or um, there's something that would uh, give them negative feedback towards their position movement what it's often used for um, was uh, aviation so historically um, you know if you look at old videos of airplanes you'd have a yoke right this is the control interface for the plane and the yoke would be mechanically connected to um i think they're called airlines or flaps i think is what we call them when we don't know what we're talking about uh the flaps on the wings and the flaps on the tail and the rudder to help steer which way you want the plane to go um this is what you know an old plane the the rudder cables look like and those would literally be like strung from the flaps to the cockpit and then you'd control the yoke and what was really nice about this is that you could feel the vibrations and movement of the air through those cables it was both directions like as you pulled and pushed and twisted the yoke you could feel how the cables and the rudder would fight against you that was your force feedback so you kind of knew what your airspeed was um you know turbulence obviously shakes the whole thing but you get a sense of how your plane is moving and how it's reacting to the air which can help you become a better pilot and um, avoid issues like accidentally crashing to the ground however um the problem with having direct connections to the rudder cables is that you need to be very strong like if you have a lot of force in the air fighting against you you have to really like push against the yoke or pull it or twist it in order to fight the air that's you know uh on the other side of the rudder that's pushing against you you have to be very strong and like if you're in trouble like if you're in a storm you might be running out of strength and then you could get in trouble because you can't fight against that air pressure anymore so um, to simplify and also allow things like autopilot, we have the creation of fly-by-wire. This is like an early, this is actually from like NASA, this photo, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, you can tell that they... So you think digital had to use the uh, uh, check, check Yeah, the font. check font. Yeah, this is the font I use for hacking. I think it's actually worked with Digital Equipment Corporation, um, or whether it's just digital. Uh, it was like just the check yeah. but um this is the, the NASA fly-by-wire. Also, again, you know, as you get into more and more complicated airplanes people you know, like one yoke in the buns was not enough you had to have everything automated as uh, so people actually had a shot of being able to control it um 
But, you know, in addition, this is from Ready Player One. Uh, I thought this was from uh, the Apple keynote from, like, yesterday. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's only thirty five hundred dollars. Uh, so, in addition to you know, okay, so so uh, you know, aeronautics and also um, automobiles were are also drive by wire, and so you'll have force feedback in those. But a second use case is for entertainment. So you know, this is this famous haptic suit from the Ready Player One movie and book, um, and it's covered all over with haptic feedback interfaces, maybe LRIs, LRAs from Vibronics, uh, so that when you uh, you know fight or run or chase or you know whatever. Uh, play games in um, the metaverse, you would feel it on your body. And so it gives you a strong connection to this virtual world you're in. Um, so, you know, that's, of course, a movie recreation. Um, you know, the first uh, commercial um, haptics vest was this thing called like the Aura Interactor, which I thought was neat. It was kind of like a wearable subwoofer and you could see it's like feel punches, explosion kicks uppercut slam dunks crashes and more so it was for gaming yeah. um gaming you know often has new technology like there was these vr haptic suits but they were very very expensive but gaming is actually kind of where um this haptic technology fun be- side story if you, if you go through a really deep rabbit hole i made a version of operation on the pocket pc that would send sound to a vest i was wearing so if you messed up taking me apart in operation i would get you know jolted in the fast and it was yeah this was 20 years ago this is a long time ago this is like 90 95 and then 97 um also gaming included since this is like a screenshot from um for people who remember from nintendo 64 they introduced the rumble pack which would have force feedback on um the controller when you played nintendo games um and this is an i fix a teardown of the dual shock and the dual shock is another controller uh, so i'm kind of making my way through the history of of, of tactile feedback and what it was really uh, commonly used for and you can see on the bottom there um to the bottom left um in the like the palm holding section of the controller there are these two circular motors and they have this kind of half disc cut and attached onto the motor the motors are round and then the half disc is kind of half moon shaped um and these are called uh erms so eccentric rotating motors and here's an eccentric rotating motor from vibronics they can be any size you take any dc motor and you put um, an eccentric weight on it. It's not symmetric. And so as it rotates, it vibrates, and that gives you that force feedback. Um, and uh, eccentric rotating motors are very popular for use with, say, um, your phone will vibrate when you have a call. They're very good for, like, big vibrations. So um, like that interactor vest or your rumble pack. It's, it is a rumble feeling. What they're not really good for is click feelings. So a lot of people these days, you probably have a mobile phone and you maybe you use the um, on-screen keyboard and you may notice that as you're typing on the on-screen keyboard, you get this tactile feedback, this click tech sound and um, feeling into your fingers. And it helps um, make the gl- clear glass surface feel more like, um, OK, I'm actually pressing a button, even though you're not, of course, technically pressing a button. I remember the Kindle was an, also an early um, use of tactile feedback when you clicked the next page that um, the Kindle would kind of vibrate a little bit to let you know that you've switched the page. So a good way, you know, as more surfaces are becoming capacitive touch, clear glass, you want to have some tactile feedback, you'll want to use something like an ERM. Uh, Sorry, an LRA. ERMs are good for vibrations. LRAs are great, are better for tactiles because they're faster. Um, You're not, you know, for the motor, if you're spinning up the motor uh, to move this eccentric uh, weight, you, know, you have to kind of get the motor going and you have to slowly ramp it up and they can be fairly fast but um, they're not going to be as fast as an lra and here's an lra um uh, cross section from vibronics um you can see it's a lot more complicated to build so they're going to be a little bit more expensive um but inside uh there's a spring and there's uh the weight and there's a magnet and then when you put the ac voltage across it and that's another thing you need to use an ac voltage not dc voltage um the magnet will vibrate up and down so the magnet will vibrate up and down making the weight vibrate up and down the spring will push back on it and you've got this very quick uh tactile feeling that um as you remember from the data sheet can uh, activate within 80 hertz um and i'll show the video because it's kind of cool there's an x-ray on the digikey website from vibronics showing um this product and you can see inside the spring and then the weight and the magnet um the the springs are also used for uh, passing the current through and that's what causes the 
um, LRA2 vibrate. So um, Vironix shows you know a bunch of products it's used for. Uh, so you can see this is like the some Samsung phones. They also had it in like one of the Nexus tablets. What a coincidence, Nexus is everywhere. Usually you don't solder to the tabs, although there are some solder tab ones. It looks like it's common to have spring contacts, and that lets the motor vibrate from within like the cavity in your product. Um, and it gives the case, it makes the case kind of a, a larger resonant cavity for um, the vibration of the LRA. You will need something to drive it. Again, you can't use it with DC voltages like you can with um, the ARMs. The ARMs are much simpler. Otherwise, you need AC voltage. Um, there's a couple that are recommended. The one that I've used is the TI DRV2605, which is in stock at DigiKey. It's very easy to use and it has uh, I squared C input. And then, um, you know, we have a breakout as well. You can connect your LRA or ERM on the output. And um, particularly neat about the DRV2605, uh, you do pay a little bit more, but it has this cool collection of waveforms that are built in uh, and they're licensed waveforms that you get a free license for when you purchase the chip. So the motions like the clicking and the bumping and the transitioning, so it's like, you know, whoop, click, click, all that stuff uh, with different strengths already pre-programmed into the DRV2605. So it's really, really easy. I mean, yes, you could DIY this yourself uh, with an H bridge and a little bit of work, but instead you can just use the DRV2605 and get started very quickly. Um, and it will work with any of the, the Vibronics LRAs. Uh, available on DigiKey. They're in stock. And there's a bunch of different ones. This is just the one that we, uh, you know, this is the featured one. But check out, they have like a huge range of different sizes and shapes. There's round ones, there's square ones, there's rectangular ones. Um, and then we've got a cool video. Yeah, this is what you want to show. So. Which maybe you can hide us. Um, uh, it shows uh, an x-ray as, as they inspect uh, the vibration. You can see That's how cool. quickly it activates. I mean, it's like basically instantaneous as you can get sharp clicking effects that are harder to get with an ERM. All right. Okay. So this is that this week's INPI.